साईराम स्टुडंट्स वेलकम टू द सेकंड सेशन ऑफ चैप्टर वन द लिविंग वर्ल्ड अडेप्टेशन्स एंड क्लासिफिकेशन लेट अस रिवाइज व्हाट वी हैड लर्न इन द फर्स्ट सेशन फर्स्ट वी सॉ द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अडेप्टेशन ग्रेजुअल चेंजेस ऑकर इन द बॉडी पार्ट्स एंड ऑल्सो इन द बिहेवियर ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच हेल्प्स दैम टू एडजस्ट टू द सराउंडिंग्स सच चेंजेस आर कॉल्ड एज अडेप्टेशन then we saw about the adaptation in aquatic plants now many of the aquatic plants they are thin and slender like ribbon and because of this they can withstand the fast currents of water air spaces in the stems and the petioles of many aquatic plants helps them to float in water the surface of the stem and the leaves of many aquatic plants are covered with a waxy layer then we saw about the adaptation in the plants of snowy regions in the snowy regions there are coniferous trees like deodar and pine they are conical in shape with sloping branches now whenever there is heavy snowfall and extreme cold the snow gets not get accumulated on the tree because of the sloping branches and the thick bark of the tree helps them to withstand from the cold then we saw about the adaptation in desert plants desert plants they are either leafless or there are leaf like small needles or modified into thorns and because of this they lose very little water by evaporation the stems they are green in color and that's why they can perform the process of photosynthesis then we saw about the adaptation in forest regions and grassland regions in the forest regions there are variety of plants say uh, trees herbs and bushes so they all compete among themselves for sunlight the climbers and the vines they grow to a greater height with the help of the support of a plant then about the grassland regions there are diverse type of bushes and grasses now these grasses they have fibrous roots and because of this they can prevent soil erosion in the equatorial regions the grasses are very tall and that's the reason the animals like lion tiger deer they can hide easily in these grasses and in the cold regions the grasses are small so there you can see the animals like rabbit then we saw about the adaptation for ingestion of food in plants we took the example of the plant cascata that is dodder which is a parasitic plant so it depends on the host plant for uh, food and water now this plant it is deficient in nitrogen too so it uh, improves its deficiency by consuming the insects so it has got the ability to attract the insects we took the example of fungi which does not have chlorophyll and it cannot perform the process of photosynthesis so it has got root like fibers which absorbs the uh, nutrients from the starchy substances like bhakri or bread then we saw about the adaptation in animals first we took the aquatic animals wherein we took the example of fish air bladders are present within the body and because of this they can swim in water we took the example of frog where frog has got a slippery smooth skin triangular head and web toes and because of this reason it can swim in water then Uh, they have got a typical color on their back and because of this they can easily hide in the grasses then we took the exam adaptation in forest and grassland animals uh, we categorized the animals as herbivorous and carnivorous now carnivorous animals like lion tiger they have got uh, sharp teeth that is the canine teeth which are sharp and pointed and they have got strong legs because of which they can run very fast and capture their prey easily their eyes they are located on the forehead and because of this they can spot their prey from a long distance 
then in herbivorous animals the eyes they are located below the forehead and because of this they get a wide angle vision and they can so they can protect themselves from the predators then they have got long uh, legs and because of this they can take long heaps and they can run very fast they have also got sharp teeth and because of this they can chew the tough plant material then we saw about the adaptation of animals in snowy regions in the snowy regions we took some examples of polar bear white fox silver fox so they have got some typical typical characteristics like the body color is white or uh, silver in color then they have got thick uh, hair uh, thick skin and long hair then we saw about the adaptation in aerial animals aerial animals are those which can fly in the sky or uh, then uh, the birds uh, which are light in weight and because of this they can fly in the air also the spindle shaped body helps them to minimize the uh, resistance of air while flying then we took the example of insects insects also they are light in weight and they have got a tapered body and that's the reason they can also fly with the two pairs of wings and also walk with the uh, six stick like legs then we took the example of bat it can uh, fly with the help of patagium that is a fold of skin between the hind legs and the fore legs then we took about the adaptation in reptiles we took the examples of crocodile and snake which uh, use their muscles to creep now they also show adaptation in their skin uh, body color etc now let's move to the next part that is adaptation for food in animals so animals we have categorized them into herbivores and carnivores so special adaptations are made in each category to make the process of feeding easy now if i take the example of lion and tiger the adaptation is it has got sharp teeth and what is the use of this adaptation it is used to tear flesh so let's move to the next part that is adaptation for blending with the surroundings now whenever you go in the park or in the garden you cannot spot easily the colorful butterflies lizards and grasshoppers this is because they get camouflage that means they get disguise themselves among the grasses and the parts of the plants like leaves stems and flowers and it is because their color it blends with the surroundings so we are not able to easily spot them now let's move to the darwin's theory of evolution so this is the great scientist named charles darwin he was a biologist and he studied about the various types of plants and animals and he made a suggestion that only those organisms are likely to survive which can best adapt themselves to a changing environment so this theory is called as the theory of survival of fittest and this is the darwin's first principle so children if you are asked what is the theory of survival of fittest or what is darwin's first principle you are going to write only those organisms are likely to survive which can best adapt themselves to the changing environment then he made a second principle that if an organism is born with a new beneficial characteristic and is able to survive this change is preserved in the next generation so this was darwin's second principle and he called it as the theory of natural selection so children if a question is asked what is the theory of natural selection or what is darwin's second principle you are going to write if an organism is born with a new beneficial characteristic and is able to survive this change is preserved in the next generation so you have i hope you have understood the darwin's both first and second principle 
now let us move to the classification of living organisms so it is very difficult for us to study and remember all the organisms in the living world so for this purpose classification was used now this many scientists used different criteria and they independently classified the plants and animals so a hierarchy is formed in the classification that starts with the kingdom animalia or kingdom plantae so groups and subgroups they are formed depending upon the basic similarities and differences called as the hierarchy of classification children if you are asked what is the hierarchy of classification or define hierarchy of classification you are going to write hierarchy is formed in the classification that starts with the kingdom animalia or kingdom plantae and so groups and subgroups are formed depending upon the basic similarities and their differences so this is the theory a hierarchy of classification let's move to the uh, this picture wherein the hierarchy is given and they have taken an example of mango and example of human now as i told you the hierarchy starts with the kingdom plantae or animalia so the first one is kingdom so mango belongs to the kingdom plantae phylum anthophyla it belongs to the class dicotyledon it be, then the order is sapindales it belongs to the family anacardiac it belongs to the genus uh, mangifera and it belongs to the species indica now let's move to the hierarchy of kingdom animalia where they have taken the example of human so humans it belongs to the kingdom animalia phylum is chordata it belongs to the class mammalia order is primates family is hominidae genus is homo and the species is sapiens now let's move to the binomial nomenclature by the scientist carl linnaeus now let us take an example that the teacher in the classroom she calls out the name of kabir so there are four students with the name kabir in that class now the other students they do not know which te uh, which student the teacher wants to speak to so when the teacher says kabir sharma the students understand that the teacher wants to speak to kabir sharma so kabir is the first name and sharma is the last name so same way the binomial nomenclature is also done with the first name and the uh, last name so binomial nomenclature it is used to identify each organism scientific name has been assigned to each organism it consists of two parts first part as the genus and the second part as the species as i told you the first name and the second name so genus and species <clears throat> then all identified organisms they have been assigned a binomial name as per the guidelines of international code of nomenclature now let us see how they have been assigned the name following are some of the examples of organism from kingdom plantae and animalia classified by the binomial method of nomenclature now they have made two columns wherein they have given some examples of living things and their scientific name now if you take the living thing dog it has been given a scientific name as canis lupus familiaris then cow boss taurus hibiscus hibiscus rosa sinensis jowar sorghum bicolor so now you can see from this the scientific names are so difficult to remember isn't it now since we have uh, seen in this chapter about the adaptation in living world uh, 29th april is the world frog protection day so killing or harming the frogs is prohibited by the wildlife protection act so students uh, with doctor uh, the first chapter is over let us just uh, have a recap on what we have done in today's session first we saw about the adaptation for uh, food in animals 
in that uh, we categorize the uh, animals as carnivorous and herbivorous and special uh, adaptations are made in each category to make the process of feeding easy then we saw about the adaptation of blending with surroundings wherein we took the examples of grasshopper and butterflies where because of their color they blend with the surroundings then uh, we took about the uh, darwin's theory of evolution wherein there were two principles first was the theory of uh, survival of fittest which is called as the darwin's first principle then we took the darwin's second principle which is known as the theory of natural selection then there was a classification of living organisms wherein we saw the definition of hierarchy of classification wherein it starts with the kingdom animalia or kingdom plantae and then groups and subgroups are formed depending upon their basic similarities and differences then we saw about the binomial nomenclature by the side scientist carl linus uh, wherein <clears throat> the binomial nomenclature was done on the basis of the genus and species that is two parts the first name and the second name then we took uh, the example of how the scientific name is given uh, to each and every organism so students there is an assignment uh, please uh, do it and uh, let's meet in the next session thank you